What's going on everybody? Jeremiah here from Babylon My Backyard, a pond and gardening channel packed full of all sorts of how-to videos for you. In today's video we're going to be building an indoor pond right here. It'll be just under a thousand gallons. Maybe even I could get it to a thousand gallons if I can dig deep enough. Let's not mess around. Let's go ahead and get into this. The first thing that I have to do is I have to go out and tear apart a raised bed that I had built years ago. Underneath of the raised bed, we built a turtle enclosure for my son's turtle, and I need the 2x12s for that, and then I need the barrels for some other builds. The reason that I'm actually tearing apart this raised bed here is because that spot turned out not to have very good sunlight. I have the way that the sun's coming. There's only a certain part of the year where it has a decent amount of sun and I was growing things like cilantro and stuff in there but I'll probably be doing most of that growing in this greenhouse now. And then I also got some really nice pallets from the neighbor. Last winter our furnace went out and when our furnace went out we had people offering us some wood and the neighbor offered us some heavy duty pallets that they weren't going to be using. So I tore apart those pallets, removed all the nails and then it's like two by eight material that I have there. So I'm going to use it to build the short walls that attach to the long wall. I'll also be walking you through how we attach it to the external wall here and what I need to do to the external wall to make sure that it's all strong enough. How I anchor it to the ground so that it just doesn't push away and how I attach everything, all the walls together. After we get the framing all built, then we're going to plywood the insides of the whole pond. We'll put in our liner and then we'll cap the tops off. So this plan was done up before I really thought about what I was going to be doing and originally I, I was going to be doing 2x12 on all the walls around. So now obviously I'm using 2x8s here and there like I said a little bit ago and it's not even finished drawing so this is more for me than for you but basically these studs here are separated at every foot and I'll have the same studs on the opposite side as well. I just don't have them showed in this picture. And then I'll have a support coming from the bottom on the back, the outside to the top of the inside. And that's just because I don't want all the weight from that water to push this wall and bow it out. The bottom is anchored in and the top is not anchored. So I want that support, especially through this middle area where it will, it could start pushing and bowing. This is less than a foot. It's only about nine and three quarters between those and uh, that one. So the very center of this has a little closer spacing. And I, I didn't know for sure what was going to happen. I just was doing a foot, a foot, a foot, a foot, a foot spacing, a foot, a foot, a foot spacing from the ends, hoping that I would have a little bit closer distance in the begin or in the middle. So the next thing I got to do is cut my angle supports and this will be the side towards the water so I'll cut my angle supports to fit in here appropriately.
Now originally these were going to be 2x12s, but now they're 2x8s and I'm going to have a 2x8 top and bottom plate with 2x8 studs every foot. I have a bunch of that 2x8. Having those 8 inch studs all the way across is going to help with that resistance push this direction, so I don't need any supports that way. Because the anchor here, even though it's just one big piece across, the anchor on this corner is going to help with the push of this wall that way. And these walls aren't very long, so they don't really need anything crazy. I'll still anchor them in. Both sides will still be anchored in. I want to take a quick second to talk about having a greenhouse. Having a greenhouse is great. You get to extend your growing season. You can grow a little later, a little earlier. It can become difficult or expensive to grow in a greenhouse. Because glass and plastic are really good at letting light and the heat inside, it can be hard to regulate temperatures within a greenhouse. So you can do things like add a fan to help cool or more expensive, add a heaters to help heat. The greenhouse to regulate that temperature. The easiest and most commonly used way to regulate the temperature in your greenhouse is to use thermal mass. Basically what we're talking about is using the power of the sun, taking that energy that is the heat and absorbing it into something and then slowly releasing it back out. If you've ever been digging in your garden and you've noticed that the temperature of the dirt is warmer down lower as you keep going. Or even if you've dug in the fall or spring when it's really cold outside still and you, you start digging and then you see steam coming out of the ground. Well, the wet dirt, it is a form of thermal mass. It will hold on to the warmer temperatures and slowly release that out. Now, you know that that's happened. You've probably experienced that. Well, concrete holds heat two times better than wet dirt holds heat. So any concrete that you have in a greenhouse will hold heat and then slowly release that heat. Water, on the other hand, holds heat four times better than wet soil. If you think about that, then water is a better alternative even than concrete to have in a greenhouse. And I'm not saying you want to put fish tanks and such in your greenhouse. These, these are not necessary for a greenhouse. If you're going to do aquaponics, it definitely helps. But sometimes people just use a, a barrel or multiple barrels with water in them and they'll store them along the north wall. If I were to put barrels on this side, those barrels are going to absorb the heat and then release that heat as the temperatures get cooler in the greenhouse. And sometimes people do that. Well, that's going to have to do it for this video. Um, this is a long build, so I had to split this into two videos. Make sure that you come back so that you can see us finish this up. Uh, the video link will be right here in the corner. Um, but don't miss that because that's really how everything starts to tie together for this.